What should a woman bring to the table? Let's talk about it. Hey, 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 Charisma here. Welcome back. What should a woman bring to the table? Now, you as a man probably have heard this question before. It's certainly a very hot topic that's always debated on social media, uh, on podcasts, and in life in general. What should a woman bring to the table? Now, we know in this society that it's always talked about what the man should bring to the table, but what should a woman bring to the table? On today's show, I'm gonna be showcasing some different opinions on what a woman should bring to the table and also some other examples of modern women uh, way of living in today's society. It's just crazy to me, but let's get started. So first up, I want to share with you an article on um, ricochet.com. And it's this gentleman who is talking about what a woman brings to the table, and he's relating to what his wife brings to the table as a woman. And he sort of started a conversation in the article off by relating to what's being said on social media, and he cites um, pearly things and her opinion. Let's jump into it. So his name is Tim McNabb, and here's let's let's get into what he is saying. What does a woman bring to the table? He says, "I've been listening to YouTuber, a YouTuber by the name of Pearl Davis, or just Pearly Things. Pearl Davis is making bones by pointing out some of the foibles of the fair sex." Specifically, she's identifying certain proclivities that today's woman, women exhibit that are counterproductive. She cites promiscuity, addiction to attention, and a desire to dominate their men among the sy some systemic sins that are driving men away from the institutions of marriage. Ms. Davis says that when women lead families, things start to fall apart. Her formulation is that the natural order of things are God, men, women, and children. She sells women shouldn't vote t-shirts. There is a lot of overlap between her maxims and examples found within the manosphere. Mostly male social media influencers who advise men on what to look for slash avoid or slash what to avoid, and how to conduct themselves in the sexual marketplace. These influencers range from Jordan Peterson to Andrew Tate. The former calls men to be the best possible person they can be by finding courage to embrace responsibility and embark on a life adventure that includes love, marriage, children, and legacy. The latter embraces the love them and leave them ethos, transactional relationships between the sexes. The Andrew Tate crowd is not into marriage. Now, this is his opinion. Ms. Davis and commenters in the manosphere are asking, what are women bringing to the table? Well, in my household, it's a lot of tasty food that is very healthy. And that is very healthy. My wife is a fantastic cook and a hot, wonderful homemaker. There's a maxim that a man can buy a house, but a woman makes it a home. Let me see if I can just share this here. Make it a home. That is a very, that is very true in my case. However, the task that my wife performs, the physical manifestation of something mystical, at least by my lights. I have been in houses where men lived. Some are roommates, some gay couples. Of the four or so, I never felt the same homeness that I feel in households of women and wives. Totally unscientific, but if you know, you know. 
I'm raising a granddaughter. I want her to be the best version of who she can be. Children are born wet, naked, barbarians, with nothing to guide them but their appetite. We, as parents, have to provide the guidance for being civilized. I don't know, I don't think girl power is going to cut it. I don't want to raise a narcissistic princess doomed to spiraling discontent and a house full of cats. Her grandma sure isn't like that. I asked the AI chat GPT 3.5 to turn Proverbs 31, 10, 30, 31, 10 to 30, 10 to 31 into this list of characteristics of a virtuous woman. I edited it a bit because I'm human. So the first thing, worth. She's more precious than rubies. Trustworthy. Her husband's heart trusts in her. Supportive. She's supportive. She does him good and not harm all the days of her life. She's industrious. She seeks wool and flax and works with her willing hands. She's entrepreneurial. She considers a field and buys it. With the fruit of her hands, she plants a vineyard. She perceives that her merchandise is profitable. She has strength. She dresses herself with strength and makes her arms strong. Charitable. She opens her hand to the poor and reaches out her hand to the needy. Prudence. She's not afraid of the snow for her household, for all her housework are clothed in scarlet. Dignity. She makes bed coverings for herself. Her clothing is fine linen and purple. Leadership. Her husband is known in the gates when he sits among the elders of the land. And wisdom. She opens up her mouth with wisdom kindness and the teachings of kindness is on her tongue diligence she looks well to the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness praiseworthiness her children rise up and call her blessed her husband also and he praises her faithful charm is deceitful and beauty is vain but a woman who fears the lord is to be praised i think these answers the question what should a woman bring to the table? And candidly, all these virtues ought to be found in me. Two people equipped with these virtues are going to make a very satisfying life together, no matter what the detail of that life might be. My wife was not raised under X wave feminism. She wanted to make a home with lots of children. Alas, she was not treated with honor and respect. Her conduct did command it. She and I have had to work out our issues, but the basic code and operating system was there. I think she picked up this up. I think she picked this up from her own nature, upbringing and culture. It runs beautifully. I just have to get out of the way. I said all of this to say, my experience has been that women are usually getting clobbered in the bad partners department. But yeah, evangelicals have a robust manhood industrial complex extolling men to be good leaders for their families with an implication that being that if you want to build it, they will come. That being a good man will attract a good woman. I am not convinced that this is true. I think that the social pressure is for women to have expectations of their mates without much thought given to the responsibilities of being a partner. I certainly thank God for my wife. And that was beautifully put. And to echo what he said in this article is that men are expected to be a lot of things and to be responsible and to be a good man. But what are the expectations of the woman being the, not only a good woman, but also being a good partner. What is she bringing to the table? In other words, the emphasis has to be placed on the woman that she has to be also bringing certain attributes, characteristics to a relationship that's going to help that relationship thrive and survive and be beautiful and be long lasting. Moving on. Now we're going to hear from... Antoine Daniels on what a woman should bring to the table. 
Let's get into it. Ladies, ladies, y'all going to have to come with something better than just saying that y'all bring peace, that y'all do dishes, that y'all can cook to the table. Mm. Hear me out. We going to get into the show. We going to get it popping. I want to get into this Fonnie Willis. We got to talk about a lot of different things. When people say, well, Anton, you don't really know what's out here because, or you don't know what single guys deal with and all of this other stuff. Let me tell you something, bro. I live a life of, th of 10 men. I live the life of 10 men. I'm out in the streets. I participate. I got my own place. I also am very successfully married. I got a daughter. I run into people all the time. I have conversations. And... My chick is on a flight. Like, she already out of town. She been out of town for a couple of days now. So she out, you know, with my brother and my sister. And they down there in Florida already. So I'm going to meet them down there tomorrow morning. <laughs> but I spent a lot of time. I split my time between the suburbs and the city, right? Mm. And so when I'm splitting my time between the suburbs and the city, thank God I don't have the type of chick. Shout out to Rita. I, I got to give Rita her props. Let me give her a round of applause. <laughs> Thank God I don't have the type of chick to where if you ask her, what do you bring to the table? She will never, ever say, oh, I cook, I clean or anything <laughs> like that. And I'm not going to tell you what the answer is. And maybe I'll just save that for Wednesday night. Mm -hmm. But she don't say, oh, man, oh, I cook and clean. That's your reasonable service. That's just part mm -hmm. of being a, a good housemate. <laughs> you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? You, when did you not supposed to be clean? Exactly. If you hungry... When cook. wouldn't you cook? Exactly. And so that's not anything special. But let me tell you why you got to bring more to the table, right? Hmm. Because me splitting my time has now really, really allowed for me to see what a lot of guys are lacking or they're missing hmm. by not having a woman in the house. Now, I understand completely what God says when he says that women are a help me. They yeah. are supposed to be a help meet. But then if you are help meet, then I need to understand what is it that you're helping me with? Anyways, because if you exactly. don't add any value mm -hmm. based off of where I'm going individually. Mm -hmm. So I got a chick that now is running an entire, entire different segment of companies. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? She overseeing it and she's very submissive. She, she learns what I take and she applies it. She calls me in the morning and say, Hey, this is happening. This is happening. This contract is coming over. This payment need to be sent over. We got this coming. This is the, the latest update with this project that we got wow. happening. This Amazing. person is late on their payments. We got, we need to extend grace on them. And so she's my eyes and ears. She sees a lot of different mm -hmm. things. She's running the, the development arm of my company and stuff. She's a great mother. It's a lot that goes into it. And I'm wow. not going to say everything that she does, but I'm just going to say she's very much productive. So much so so if I wasn't with her, she would still always be mine. So it's no point in her not being up under me. You know what I'm saying? Because I need her. It's mm. even to the point to where in order for me to continue to profit, I've taught her so much. There's no way that I will let her go and then be able to be with another dude to be able to add to his bag. <laughs> I've already groomed you. I've already made you who you are. I've taught you too much for you to wow. ever add value into another man's life. Let's be clear. So it sounds like his wife is it's a major asset in his life, as wives should be. Like you cited that God said that a wife should be a helpmate. And it's clearly that his wife is being a helpmate in you know, managing his businesses, that he doesn't have to worry and be concerned how they're growing and, and getting so that they're functioning as they should be. So let's continue. That's what I'm talking about when I'm talking about a woman that is impossible to let go. Mm. For all of the stuff that I've taught you, ain't no way in the world I will let you go and be able to add value into another man's life. But listen, forget the sex part. This is Friday, right? Can we get into it? Forget the sex. Forget all of that. that that's, that's, that's surface level. That's small-minded, childish, little baby stuff that you're talking mm -hmm. about right now. I'm talking about real-life, grown folk talk. When we talking about a great woman, I'm talking about a woman that you've grown to be one mm. of the greatest values on the face of this earth. Do you think for one second that mm. I would ever let that woman go off and be able to add value into another dude's life mm -mm. based off of stuff that I taught her? 
Nope. The amount of money that I invested in her, mm. forget taking half, you can't go. <laughs> you can't you go. You can't go. It's just like a great employee. I hate to yeah. say it like that, but from a business perspective, it's just like a great employee. Mm -hmm. Right? When you see this great employee, you don't want to like, let hey, him man, go. Listen, my goal is to make sure this person is so productive because it's much yeah. different than dealing with an employee that you got to always figure out, hey, yeah. are they doing what they supposed to do? Exactly. Oh, are it's micromanaging. You know what I'm saying? Forget all of that type of employee. I'm talking about a great employee. Mm -hmm. You give them equity into the company. Mm -hmm. You give them equity into the company. You it's make true. sure that they're doing what they're supposed to do. You check on them because they're mm -hmm. so busy focused on adding value into your life. I taught you too much. Okay. <laughs> you, you think I'm about to let that another nigga benefit? Yeah, right. <laughs> but let's remove the valuable women, right? Let's remove that part of it. Yeah. I don't care about that. Let's just talk about surface level women. And then we're mm. going to get into the show of what they think that they bring as far as value. You okay. know what I'm saying? You got to come up something way, way, way more different than I cook or I clean or I give sex. So what? You get sex too. You get it the same <laughs> way that you're giving it. As a matter of fact, I'm the one that's doing special. all the work. I'm the one that's doing all of the work. Mm. You get it in the same way that you're getting it. Mm -hmm. And the reason that one of the, one of the reasons why this is important is because, you know, I wake up in the morning, house is clean, and I'm talking about the the apartment, the one that I'm splitting my time at. That mm. you know, I have her over sometimes, and sometimes she go back out to the suburbs in order to make sure that she with my daughter and stuff. Yo, I throw the dishes inside of the dishwasher. I throw a load. That's my DoorDash person. I don't. I throw a load inside of the washing machine. Throw the pods in. I throw. Mm -hmm. a, I throw the pod inside of the washing machine. Throw a little bit of uh, the little you know, sh 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 the Tide <laughs> in there. The the little things that make it smell good. Yeah. Take the load that's inside of the washing machine. Throw it into the dryer. Throw some dryer sheets up in that joint. Make it smell good. Mm hmm. Make up the bed. Order my DoorDash. Throw the dishes inside of the dishwasher, jump on my bike, and I'm gone. Yeah. Now, what do I need you for? Mm. Mm. True. What do I need you for? Hmm. To throw a load in the washing machine? Mm -hmm. I can do that myself. It don't take me but a couple minutes to do that. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You clean, it never got dirty. Mm. The only reason it got dirty is because y'all walking around tearing up the crib and tracking dirt in my crib. <laughs> what is what do y'all think that we can't do that y'all mm. doing that's all i'm asking mm. what is it that y'all think that we can't do that y'all do so in all fairness though antoine yes there's not many there are men that are neat and tidy like yourself but there are some men out there are just it's ridiculous like and they weren't taught right and that's that's the fault of the mothers or the person, people who've raised them up to teach your sons how to cook, how to clean, how to look after yourself and not be being taught that, oh, you don't need to learn how to cook. You don't need to look after yourself. You don't need to learn how to do laundry or any of the things because one day you'll be married and the woman will take care of it. But Antoine clearly was raised in a way that he's raised that he can look after himself. Right. And this is how we want men to be, that they can be self-efficient. And so therefore, when a woman comes into the picture, she needs to be able to bring much more to the table than what's already been provided. Right. That's all I'm wondering. What is it that's so awesome about what y'all put in? Hmm. Go down to the valet, ah, jump in my car, keep going. What, what's so awesome about you being here? Hmm. I spread out in the bed, spread eagle, take up the whole bed, the whole thing. The scent booster, shout out to C. Langley. I, I'm just saying, what is it that, that y'all do that's so awesome hmm. that, that requires us to be able to upend our entire life or mm -hmm. 
then take on your children mm. or any of that type of stuff. I got my own health care coverage. I got Roth 401k investments, money. Hmm. Why why do y'all think that y'all so awesome? Hmm. I'm, I'm interacting with the chat. I'm looking at the chat right now because I'm trying to understand and I'm going to read these super chats shortly. All I'm asking is, what is it that you do that will require a man that is winning? Now, I'm not talking about no dusties. Right. We're not talking about just no basics. I'm talking about a guy that is winning. Winning mm. at the top of the the top of the totem pole. What value can you bring into this 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 sphere that I don't already have by myself? True. And That's we be happy. <laughs> Going through, looking at the whole city, stopping off, kicking it with people, having a good time, networking, go to the restaurant when you want to, wake up in the middle of the night. Mm. It's the Keisha says it's the essence of our presence. <laughs> ah, I'm all right. I'm a pass gotta, on that. Any more, any more uh more it has to be more than that. For sure. I'm good on essence. It's the essence festival down there in uh what is it, New Orleans? They got the Essence Festival down there. I don't need the Essence. It's the aura of a woman that shifts the room. Well, last time I checked, the room is the same size when, mm -hmm. when you was there and when you left. I, I don't, I'm, I'm telling you, I don't need no auras. I'm good on the aura. Is it anything else? Hmm. Ladies, y'all got to tell me. Miss Jennifer said ego boosting. <laughs> and I know <laughs> I'm messing around. But I'm just saying, what else do y'all got? Hmm. And, and it's a nice, to, don't get me wrong, it's a nice to have agreeableness. I agree with myself. I ha, Listen, I don't have no disagreements when I'm in there by myself. There's no disagreements with anybody in there by myself. Mm -hmm. I got Netflix, I got my computer, I got, have y'all seen my dishes? My dishes are bronze. They got bronze handles. <laughs> oh my God. I got all of the water that I want and the strawberries inside of the refrigerator. Instacart came and they gave me a new delivery of a, you know what I'm saying? Like I got everything. Mm. What, stroke of the ego. Mm. Uh, interesting. So there you have it. That's the gist of Antoine's take on what a woman should bring to the table. So as you can hear, he's saying, ladies, you got to bring, you got to bring more to the table than just the essence of your presence or the aura that's going to shift the room or whatever else. So you got it. Moving on. Next up, let's hear what the Godfather has to say about what a woman should bring to the table. And the Godfather, as you know, it is Kevin Samuels, the late Kevin Samuels, may he rest in peace. Let's hear what he has to bring to the table, what he thinks a woman should bring to the table. Nobody want to deal with you. How about that? Let's see. I'm intelligent. I'm motivated. I have my own business. I maintain my own lifestyle. I'm not understanding the full scope of your question. Well, see, that's the problem now, ain't it? You just described yourself as a man. <laughs> You're a man. See, you got to understand what the men want. Mm -hmm. And none, nothing you said in there was anywhere close to being feminine, beautiful, inspirational, caring, loving. The way mm -hmm. you're talking almost sounds like a dude. Mm -hmm. Very true. So there you have it. What Kevin Samuels, the late godfather of these streets says you know women come to come up with all these different things but they generally sound like a man when they're saying well i'm intelligent i have a business usually a man can do that too so moving on to let's talk let's listen to what cardi b has to say in the nature now cardi b is denounced feminism by the way in this little clip you can hear all about cardi b and what she thinks a woman should bring to the table let's get it what i believe in right like Me it's too. like 
if if you're gonna be the type of bitch that like a nigga you want a nigga to take care of you and everything but it's like all right you have to like pick a balance like it's like you cannot just be a bitch that's like oh and my man take care of me he does the bills but it's like what do you do mm. what are you contributing like it's like all right like you can't be complaining like oh i cook i clean every day it's like okay but you don't work you don't contribute mm. to the house so i just feel like it's like so, and like sometimes people be like oh so this is like really controversial right cool I feel like it's very controversial when, like, be like, oh, I don't go 50-50. But it's like, all right. So if you and your man make the same amount of, of money, right? Mm -hmm. But only your man is the one that paying all the bills. How y'all ever going to save up to, like, buy a house mm. or buy a business? Because he's never going to be able to afford to. Exactly. So it's like certain things is like a, a joint thing to do. You, you know gotta what I'm work saying? together. Like, it's, like, it's like a work together. But I just be feeling like sometimes people, like the internet really be having people fucked up from like real reality type mm -hmm. shit. So it's like, it's like, all right, so your your mom and dad used to work every single day, right? Mm -hmm. So your mom and dad used to work every single day so your mom could save her money and what, buy purses and your dad just pay all the bills. That's not how it works. This no. is like your mom was in the house cooking and cleaning every day. Your dad was working or they was both working too. To pay both the bills, like y'all be acting like y'all don't know what the fuck that is like no more. Like, come on. <laughs> and your mom money was your was your dad money, and your dad money was your mom money. Like, it was it was like that. that it was it, like it's like I, that's what I'm saying. Like I'm not a feminist anymore because it's like yeah, that, sometimes it's like y'all bitches don't be living in the real world. Right. Mm -hmm. Y'all y'all not living there. Y'all be talking about my money is my money and his money is my money. Shit. I mean, my money is my money and his money is my money. But like, <laughs> my money is my money. Like, my money is my money and his money is his money. But it's like. But, you know, like, it's like we both spend money on each other and right. everything. And it's like if we want to go and everything, it's like, all right, like, if we're going to buy a house, like, let's go half and half. And it's like if we're going to buy. it's not a one-way street. It's not a one-way exactly. street. Like, it's like if we're going to buy, like, a like crazy ex expensive furniture, it's like, all right, you buy the couch and I buy the dining room set. Like, it's like it's, it's a it's a both thing. Like, right. it's a both thing. Because then when you leave, like, bitch, you really leave with nothing because you was like a bitch. Hey, but he has to pay all the bills. Well, you now you're divorced and you don't got not no house. Mm. You don't got shit. You don't even got a couch, bitch. Mm -hmm. You don't even got a couch. That's, but that's my thought. I'm really old school. I'm old school. Uh, I'm old school, too. <laughs> ah. and there you have it. Uh, Cardi B, no longer a feminist, and talking about what a woman should bring to the table. And she's making, uh, dropping some gems there. I'd love to hear your opinion about that. Moving on, I'm going to showcase a woman who says that the government is her baby daddy. Yeah, let's get into it. Before, and I will say it again, the government is my baby daddy. The minute that they took my right away to decide if I wanted this little crotch goblin or not was the minute that they took over the role of my baby daddy. That's the minute they took on the role of paying for my formula, of providing food in my house, and for that tax refund. Mm -hmm. wow. Because the government is our baby daddy. Wow, wow, wow. First of all, the government is not your baby daddy. The government did not force you to lay down with a man, spread your legs, have unprotected sex, and out pop the baby. The government was not there. They're not responsible. They may be giving you checks every month to take care of the child, but they're not your baby daddy. Like, it's so disgusting to see women come online and be so proudful to... to to talk about the government is my baby daddy. Well, the government didn't ask you to have a child. No, they didn't. She's saying she's complaining that they stopped her right to to not, you know, what well, she's talking about, have an abortion. But they didn't tell you to go have a child either. They didn't tell you to go have unprotected sex. This is a problem with modern women. They never take responsibility for their actions. There's no accountability for their actions. It's always somebody else's fault. It's either the man that they slept with, their husband, the boyfriend, and now it's the government. When will these women wake up? Please wake the hell up. Moving on to the story where a man found out that his wife-to-be has been cheating. Let's hear how he handles it. Everyone, thank you for coming on this wonderful occasion, on this wedding day, to my cousin. Thank you for always being there for me. And baby, I love you. I truly love you. There's one thing I want to say. 
to you about that. Please figure out the words to express it. So I figured the best way to bring that to me would be to show you. So he found out his wife to be, his fiance has been cheating on him. He's got the proof, a video when the man comes over to the apartment and he held it down to the wedding day to show to her that he knows. And obviously he's not going to go through with the wedding, but that was very interesting. Oh my goodness. And we're going to wrap the show up with... A little bit of Candace Owens as she went on the podcast Fresh and Fit and she gives some sound advice to OnlyFans models. And let's hear what she had to say. Uh, for young women who turn to OnlyFans for solely financial reasons, what else could they do for money? Literally anything else. You're not going to have a life of comfort. You're not going to have a life of like whatever you see on Instagram. Mm. I mean, I slept on friends' couches. I actually had a friend, ironically, in Miami who, like, we were best friends all through high school, went to a, a club one night, and our, our luck somehow ended up with, like, meeting, you know, Clef and Lil Wayne, and, and she just turned the whole life. And I remember I was mm. so broke, and she was living in, like, a condo in Miami. We were in our early 20s. I was visiting her coming from school, and she gave up school, mm. you know, sleeping with everybody, Drake, da da da, da you know. Oh, she just, But she was living in, like, you know, imagine I'm, like, 20, 20 years old, and she's, I was 19, I think, and she was living, it just looked like she had so much, you know. Wow. And, um, Where's she at now? Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to update okay, you on her okay, story okay. real okay. quick. Right? <laughs> she was so innocent, but then she just was effing everybody and every rapper Ooh. was paying for her. And I remember vividly crying on the phone with my friend named Devin. And I was just like, it's so unfair. She has everything. And it's like, if mm. only I just slept with this guy, like I could have everything that he has. And he said, mm. Candace, if you think that in 10 years, your life is not going to be better than hers, you're out of your mind. Mm, exactly. I promise you stop being friends with her after I just couldn't look at her do this to her life anymore and mm. 10 years later almost to the day i was with charlie kirk we walked into the four seasons hotel in los angeles and she was the hostess wow mm. oh, shit. wow so it's you know you make a deal with the devil and then who recognized guess him first what? We, I mean, both of them, we were oh, literally best friends yeah okay. you know like inseparable sisters and like the temptation the money the whatever from that one night and she threw him herself at the rappers too. Like it wasn't like one it was Wyclef John. Yeah. Like it wasn't like he was yeah. being like she right. threw herself at him, whole thing. And it was wild and actually funny enough. Then I went and started working out of school and I was working in private equity. And my boss got married and he wanted to get Wyclef John. So I hadn't seen Wyclef since I, and then I saw him and he said to me, I'll never forget this, in the elevator, I am so proud of you for where you wow. ended up in life. And like cause he just knew that I was the friend that said no. Wow. She was a friend that Amazing. said yes. And so when I say this stuff to women, I, I understand how easy it is. And I understand how hard it is to like get off your feet. And mm -hmm. I was the person crying being like, oh, my God, it could be so easy. But I'm telling you, like, it's just not worth it. You know, no. like, it's not worth it. The person that you can attract, the there's just so much more to life. And I want all of you guys to just like hear that message and know. It's true, though, what she's saying. What I don't understand about OnlyFans models is that they are attracted to sell their bodies online for money because it's easy money. And why is it that they don't think trying to get another type of job to earn income is a possibility? Why, why do you think that this is it, that this is the only choice that they have? Now, some may say, well, okay, they have emotional baggage, trauma, uh, this is what led them down to this path. I get that. I understand it. But not everyone who has had some type of trauma in their, in their past or they've been raised in a dysfunctional family or had issues growing up end up in, on this path. They don't choose OnlyFans. So to me, that is not an excuse. That is not an excuse to sell your body. Well, let's continue. That like you just don't have to like 
live in the fast lane. You know, live in the wow. slow lane. Isn't that crazy? We need to clip that and send that yes. to every girl that's 21 that wants to be a bottle yeah, rat and do all this like 304 oh, shit. By the way, real talk, man. We had a, a girl on the show from Brazil. Remember, she's considering OnlyFans. Well, guess what? She did it. She made one. I wish she was here to hear here to hear that conversation. Mm -hmm. She made her OnlyFans like two days ago. He's being broke, it, it feels so permanent when you're. Uh, in by it. the way, I, I didn't buy my. Her friend told me that's 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 all. Uh, I know. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just sorry, you were saying Ken. Sorry, sorry. Ken just like when you're being questions? broke, when you're broke and you're in it, it feels like it's just like how am I ever gonna like right. get out of this? But I also tell people because my faith is intact that looking in the retrospect, mm -hmm. every single challenge that God gives you, like He picks you uniquely for those mm -hmm. challenges. You know what I mean? And I'm so grateful for being broke. I'm so grateful for like when I was mm -hmm. sleeping in my car, sleeping on someone's couch, sleeping in someone's closet, like just trying to like stay alive in New York because I know that it was like his perfect design to have me go mm. through those experiences because yeah. there was something bigger at the end of that. Exactly. Where like now I can speak with authority when I'm like talking to Destiny and he's like, are you lying about being poor? This is the dumbest question <laughs> I've ever had before. <laughs> it was so dumb. Oh, um, but I can speak with authority because I've been there. You know, I'm not yeah. saying this. I think I'm better than you. Like I know what options face a woman when they're young, you know? But don't don't do a deal with the devil. I okay. love that you said there's a choice because there's a choice. But women choose yeah. something. There's a choice. choices. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what's your advice for a young man? And there you have it. It is a choice. Ladies, it is a choice that you make to go sell your body online for money. It is a choice for the most part. Now, we know that there are some women and men, too, who is there. You know, it's not a choice. They're forced into it against your will, you know, the sex trafficking, we know that that exists, but that's not where we're not talking about those individuals. We're talking about the women who choose to going to OnlyFans, who choose to sell their bodies, whether it's online or offline, who make that choice and get hooked to the money and they continue to do it. But at the end of the day, it doesn't last. It's like a snow cone which only is cold and crispy and sweet for the moment as, it's, as long as it stays cold, but then it starts to melt and becomes liquid. That's exactly how that life is because it's going to end and it's not going to end nicely. And the other thing I think that's part of the problem, we live in such a pleasure-driven society, and I'm writing a book about this, where for the most part, I would say quite a lot of people don't have no clue what their purpose is. So they're being driven by pleasure as opposed to trying to take the time to find out what is my purpose here in life? What has God created me to do on this earth? How does God want me to show up? Who does God want me to impact the lives of? How what what's the transformation I'm here to facilitate? Or you know, why am I in, in existence? And because these women are not purpose-driven, they are drawn into the pleasure-seeking. And it's not only women that do it. Men do it too. But we're talking about women on this show right now. So there you have it. We've heard about, you know, the, I guess, a very familiar question. What does a woman or should a woman bring to the table? We've heard different views. I want to hear yours. What do you think a woman should bring to the table? And what do you think of all the, the other stories that I've shared here today? I'm looking forward to hearing from you. Remember to, to if you're watching this on YouTube, to subscribe to the channel. Help us to get to 10,000 subs in the next little while. And as always, remember, take care. And bye for now.